Welcome everyone, Questini here with a discussion about the mouse and keyboard in Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown and why, in certain situations, it might just be the best method of control compared to a joystick or a controller. I have a joystick, a Frostmaster Hot S X. The reason I decided to pick it up is because there are certainly limitations on the mouse and keyboard, specifically when it comes to air maneuverability. If you want to do a bunch of fancy flying, especially at high speeds, which is important in this particular game, doing it on the mouse and keyboard can leave a lot to be desired. At low speeds, sure, you can do it, but low speeds will drag missions longer, will cause you to fail high rankings, and will make you far more vulnerable to uh, the enemy. Like, you'll be far more easily destroyed uh, by enemy air defenses by uh, ground to air defenses by SAMs and by enemy jets like they'll just target you with missiles take you out very very quickly and very effectively speed is essential in order to stay alive but doing a lot of maneuvers a lot of flying maneuvers on mouse and keyboard can leave something to be desired because fast maneuvers on mouse and keyboard while they're certainly possible, you're just going to lack the accuracy of movement. So you're going to be fairly vulnerable. But, mouse and keyboard does give you one particular advantage. Accuracy of shooting. And speed of shooting as well, like lining up a target, taking the shot, switching to another target very quickly and doing this at high speed also not crashing into things because you need to fly very very low in order to do some of these maneuvers like get doing that particular maneuver on joystick is a far taller order it's possible as i emphasize but trickier Now, this depends, of course, on the plane you're using and what's the, import what's the main armament of that plane. The plane that I'm using in this particular mission is the Dark Star. The Dark Star is built around its guns, its pulse lasers that I'm using quite very effectively over here to just uh, decimate the enemy fleet while taking practically no damage in return. Okay, let's uh, try and get try and get to one of those. Uh, see if there is any special plane. Just gonna use the chaff and flares. And then take down the drone. Container boxes that contain a lot of the drones. And there's still a couple more ships. Another plane taken out. Let's go closer. So the advantage with, with the mouse and keyboard compared to uh, compared to a joystick or a controller is just like being able to accurately shoot very quickly and switch from target to target. When I'm playing with a joystick. I don't even use the guns because the accuracy that I have with them is just not that great. And it's not really worth putting in the effort. Instead, I rely more on bombs, more on missiles in order to take down the enemy. Of course, here's the thing. The enemy has countermeasures, flares, or they can just cause a missile uh, uh, cause a missile to lose tracking whereas a gun well when it's sh shooting at you it will likely if you line up target well it will likely hit and going at fast speed means that I do avoid a lot of the enemy attacks as well at the same time 
So for instance here, the entire southern section of the enemy fleet has been eliminated. Another plane destroyed. Switching to missiles over here just to fire a couple of them at the last possible moment. If needed. And now going back to base because I was reaching the map bounds over there. So that is the difference between mouse and keyboard versus jo the joystick. Like the joystick is better for maneuv aerial maneuverability on the aircraft. The mouse and keyboard is better when it comes to accurately shooting your targets on the ground. Now it's for a game like this, for this kind of arcade shooter, which is obviously not a very realistic game. But it's also the case in things like the Battlefield games and others as well. It isn't necessarily something unique to this game. Now this is the Hollywood style of flying where aircraft perform gun runs, strafing runs at extremely low altitudes. Like, the A-10 might perform an at, an, a gun run at an extremely low altitude, but it's not going to do it at Mach 5. That is madness. Pure madness and pure unrealistic design. Now, that's fine. And But I do have to emphasize that the problem here is specifically for a game like this. In proper aircraft, the way gun, uh, strafing runs happen is lower speeds. And now we're just getting swarmed by uh, like legions of aircraft. They're just going all over the place. Okay. All right, that's another juicy target. Quite a few points there. Quite a few points there, quite a few targets. Okay. Now we have a pristine enemy fleet to tackle. Over on that side. So with a mission like this with a lot of ground targets, we're just dropping bombs doesn't really feel like the most effective method unless you can guarantee that those bombs or cruise missiles are actually going to do okay take it easy <laughs> all right went out of bounds pushing Mach 5 is is certainly something And only a 35,000 score. Now this mission is pretty tricky. At least in terms of getting the S rank. Okay, we got an enemy battleship there. Or rather, a Kirov class battle cruiser. And this is supposed to be Eurasia's. Sheesh! <laughs> this is Eurasia's uh, reserve fleet! <laughs> Don't even want to think about what their actual fleet is. Now, here's why what planes do in a game like this. Here's why it's completely unrealistic. Actual dive bomb tactics in like World War II, the average... Jeez. 
We got rail guns coming in, exploding. Explosive shells on a rail gun, that's something. And then... Yeah. More planes, more victims. Gotta love the music here. Okay. Oh, that's a drone. Fleet destroyed. 44, uh, 42,000 uh, points. All right, missile. Missile almost got, uh, almost got into my numbers. Trying to get more aircraft. I've achieved the mission objectives, but that doesn't mean squat. Terminal guidance, as you say. Alright, switching. Try and get... Damn. Missed with all that. Harder hit the uh, moving target. Okay, that's another plane. Someone else trying to get off the map. Not a problem. Aircraft trying to take me down, huh? Let's try and get that one. 47,000? This ranking requires 70,000. Yeah, that is a pretty bullshit number, isn't it? But it is possible. It is, however, an extreme number. That essentially requires you to constantly shoot down aerial targets. Like, pulling this off is... A pretty tall order. And they keep firing missiles at me and I just don't care. Because I'm going so fast. That I'm dancing around them. F2. That's a Japanese version of the F-16. Let's go, let's fly at high altitude. All right. One minute and 20 seconds. Not quite a 50,000, but I'll get there. And another wave of hapless victims is incoming. The Eurasians really do like to get smashed here, don't they? Let's go. Okay. Just replenishing the ammunition before the next phase. Take off. I think... Oh, that's an SU-24. That's an SU-25. Oh, what the? Come on, game. 
<laughs> and they went down the bounds ag again. Yeah, they're out of bounds as well. 50 seconds. Switching here. Shit. Ah, it's close! That is certainly very close. You essentially need to get the air supremacy in this mission. They just get constantly get the swarms and swarms of enemies to spawn. Nope. In order to achieve the level of success you want. All right. Sam destroyed 54,000. Well, S rank is potentially beyond me at this point. Come on, F2. There we go. Here they come. Here comes. Here come the fun boys. Scream and rage. Let's kill Scream. If we can. Now, this is a situation, by the way, where your uh, missile capability can leave a lot to be desired, and actually making use of guns is the way to go. If you can, of course. If you have the accuracy for it. Actually, I'm gonna kill Rage first, because why not? Though, I, it has to be pointed out. It has to be pointed out that if you kill Rage first, Scream can be the harder one to, uh, to eliminate in the second phase of this entire endeavor. Just because of the missiles she's using. I mean, they both have Berkuts, that's not the problem, but what they do with those Berkuts is a different discussion. And that's why... Okay. That's why... Uh, can't see anything because of this damn sun. Also, this game has some weird handling with brightness. Like sometimes it gets like it gets really bright. Maybe it's a question of interaction between monitor. But I have some brightness issues over here. It's kind of unbearable, actually. All right, let's take it down. Come on, come on! Not yet. All right, slow down. Need to do those fancy aerial maneuvers. Okay. Not so fast, boys. All right. Come on, scream, go down. Because they have the electronic warfare kit. There she goes. Almost. Come on. There we go. Goodbye, Scream. Now let's goodbye, Rage. Just running around, shooting them with the gun. Probably the better way to do this mission. Come on. One drone destroyed. Very nice. 57,000. 56,000. And there he goes. 
He's gone. Barkut destroyed. That was something. Maybe if I made a bunch of successful landings manually, that would could have worked better. Because it's not just a question about being fast. Like, I destroyed the fleets pretty decently. But, uh, it's just like, you have to destroy, like... I guess I needed to destroy, like... 12 more aircraft or something like that. <laughs> That's a pretty damn tall order, isn't it? And there's your mission. Now, of course, this is for this kind of aircraft, and I obviously got a bunch of uh, upgrades for the pulse weapons that the Dark Star does use over here. If you were to play with the joystick, this is probably not the recommended playstyle, unless you're really experienced with maneuvering, maneuvering and flying at very high speeds in the Dark Star. I'm certainly not calling myself the best pilot in the world. There are much, much better people than me when it comes to it. But I just find it easier to control it like this. For these kind of missions. Captain Torres. Okay. The great beast itself. All right. Let's see what rating. Well, it's gonna be an A rating, uh, A ranking, on Ace difficulty expert controls. Would be interesting to think about how things are on normal controls. So yeah. Now, if you are, yeah, just an emblem, lovely. Now, if you're doing this, you, if you're thinking about doing the, a mission like this on, on say for instance, uh, with the joystick, this approach would not be optimal. That's the thing. You can't expect the controller to handle the same way as mouse and keyboard. You can't approach things in the same way and exact expect the same kind of result. Obvious experience, knowledge, all that muscle memory will help, but I think it would be far more optimal for a mission like this to bring a plane that has cruise missiles. And then also good anti-air capability. So, this baby. Now, I don't have the capability to get the ALA-SM, but this is what you'd probably want to get. Like, get these uh, anti-ship missiles, harpoons, whatever they are, bring these babies to the fray with an aircraft like this, just annihilate the enemy fleet from there, then switch to the anti-air missiles, and that might work better. Uh, better. Keep in mind, however, that those two mercs at the end of... Uh, keep in mind the two mercs who fight at the end of the mission will, um, will, will have really good... will have really good uh, anti destroyal name aircraft at the parent campaign mode. Complete campaign mode in over under four hours to all order that to... On a lower difficulty, probably. The glowing skin. Alright. That is all I have to say. Questine here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. And stay tuned for more.